The question was, are there long-term effects on cognitive function even after someone has gone through treatment? And alcohol is the worst in terms of causing long-term cognitive defects. Um, there's a condition that I see commonly. It's called Wernicke's. It's after a neurologist named Wernicke. Um, Wernicke's encephalopathy. Um, and what it means is a um, decline in brain function caused by um, damage to the brain. And the most common cause for Wernicke's encephalopathy is alcohol. Um, it may be um, that there's, um, I'm sorry, I'm distracting myself. It may be that there is a direct toxic effect of the alcohol on the, the brain cells, or there may be a vitamin deficiency that's caused by habitual alcohol consumption. And you know, there's not a lot of good food value in alcohol. And if, if your diet consists of all the basic um, food groups from imported beer to domestic beer to Russian vodka, then there's not a lot of B vitamins in there. And thiamine um, deficiency will cause Wernicke's encephalopathy even in non-alcoholics. Um, so the treatment is thiamine, it's a B vitamin. And in some cases we give it in shots so that um, people will get a more rapid absorption. But the hallmarks of Wernicke's encephalopathy are short-term memory loss. Um, now all of us have experienced where did I put my keys, where did I leave my wallet, but the test that, that you do as an evaluator is you ask people to remember a number of items. Um, you ask them again in a minute, and you ask them again in five minutes. And someone with Wernicke's encephalopathy usually will forget some items after one minute. And that's when you've told them that you are going to ask them again. They still cannot remember. A lot of people can beat the test because they go over it and over it and over it in their head. So I typically will distract them and ask them who the president is and to name the presidents as far back as they can remember. I'm watching the clock and then I interrupt them and ask them for those items after a minute, have them go back to the presidents and then ask them again after five minutes. And um, interestingly, um, I have seen a lot of people who definitely had Warnickeys who could beat the test, but they were like college professors and, and um, they were used to uh, um, covering up for stuff they didn't remember. <laughs> so uh, short-term memory. And then with the replacement of vitamins, um, you see that, you know, that that short-term memory comes back and you get repair. Often, what I see in a hospital situation, somebody in their 50s who's been drinking hard for 20 years, they may be quite confused for a month. Um, with the length of stay that's available to us for treatment with most insurance companies, we're discharging them right at the time when they could start to benefit from treatment. Um, at least they remember how to go home. They just don't remember how to stay sober once they get there. And, um, so, and, and that's a problem. And, and for some people, this damage will be permanent. Um, it's not going to go away. And that's when you get into more of a Korsakov's. And don't trust my spelling on this. Um, and Wernicke, Korsakov's are often lumped together, but Korsakov's is more where you have irreversible damage. Um, and um, it will get better to some extent, but it's not going to go away. And I've seen people in high functioning professions, doctors, attorneys, who were never able to practice again. 
um, and they were still functioning right up until the time they came in to the hospital. Of course, at that time, they had five different people covering for them. And when it was realized the extent of the brain damage, it was too late and they had to retire. And, um, and that happens all the time. Ironically, well, hopefully, I don't see that nearly as much now. I've been in practice for 25 years. I used to see that all the time. I rarely see that anymore um, in regular working folks because people like you do evaluations and refer them to treatment. And you know, it makes a huge difference. It's a life-saving thing. It's a tragedy that someone dies from lack of vitamins. I mean, there, there were, at one time, they used to put B vitamins into like Ripple wine, you know, Thunderbird, Mad Dog 20, et cetera, and um, um, to prevent this, you know, from street alcoholics getting brain damage. Um, and I don't know, I, I think if someone protested it was against their constitutional rights or, you know, it, it's like putting fluoride in water, you know, children have a right to have cavities. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's a common problem and it's, it's reversible. Um, what gets even more tragic, though, is in pregnant women, um, the vitamin deficiencies can cause permanent um, neural tube defects in their, their um, offspring. And so for that reason, it's, you know, it's very important not to drink, but also to recognize the, the vitamin deficiencies that can happen with that. Another um, part of your question, you know, as far as long-term cognitive defects, ironically, opiates are pretty safe. They're not associated with long-term cognitive defects. I mean, if you're dead, you're dead, but if you don't die, your, your brain comes through pretty well. Um, and um, same thing with methamphetamine, um, except with intravenous use, which causes microscopic strokes very commonly. Um, most amphetamine abusers come through cognitively just fine. Ironically, the cognitive dysfunction from coming off cocaine and methamphetamine is actually no worse than coming off nicotine. Um, and there are several studies about this that s smokers have cognitive defects measurable for a year after they quit smoking, and which is one of the reasons why it's hard to quit. Um, it's not permanent, but it, it takes time. 